Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons, and I'm working on some study notes and some training videos that cover the second chapter of Brown's Boundary Control and Legal Principles. And this is not the main video for the study notes, but what I wanted to do is a couple supplemental videos that help explain the concepts that are in chapter two. So I wanted to do a video that talked about uh, original corners versus retracement corners in a uh, let me rephrase that. Original corners and original monuments versus retracement monuments. And then I want to talk a little bit about original surveys versus retracement surveys. And then this other concept that Browns talks about, which he calls first surveys, which I think is a cool concept. So I want to, I want to cover that a little bit. So then I'm going to do another video that's going to talk a little bit about the difference between boundary lines and property lines in chapter two, because that's another really important concept in it. I just, these, the, the concept of boundary lines versus property lines and this concept of original monuments and retracement monuments um, and original surveys and retracement surveys, I think they, they're better explained graphically. So I wanted to, to put these videos together so you guys could watch these and then and then we can understand a little better the, the video that we're going to do with the study notes on Brown. So uh, bear with me here. As I uh, try and, and figure out this, uh, I'm trying something a little bit new here with, with my graphic design software, Inkscape, trying to do these videos. So in this example, we're looking at a block. So let's pretend these are lots in an industrial subdivision. So we've got eight lots in a block. Okay, so these are the lot numbers. These are the lots. And then out here, this is the center line of the street right away that surrounds our block. Okay, and when this original subdivision went in that created these lots in this block, uh, the the surveyor set centerline monuments, and he set block corner monuments. So these are the centerline monuments he set, four for this particular block, and then he set these block corner monuments, these four. Okay, but he didn't set any of these interior lot corners. So he just set the centerline monuments and the block corners, and that's actually pretty typical. Uh, here in California, in a lot of places, you don't even get these block corners. You just get the center line mons. So my subdivision is an example of that. I'm in a very modern subdivision, and there are no lock corners set. Uh, all we have is center line mons in my subdivision. Okay. So all of these monuments, the center line monuments that I've shown in green and the block corner monuments that I've shown in kind of that redefined horizons purple, all eight of these monuments are of what we call original controlling monuments. Okay, Browns calls them original monuments. I call them control original controlling monuments. They control. Okay, so they they take precedence. They're legally without error unless you can show some really funky circumstances. Okay, what that means is if you find this original monument a little bit out of position and it and it matches the record on the original subdivision map. Uh, then it's going to control. It's going to control this corner of lot one. Okay, even if it's a little bit out of out of place mathematically. Sometimes even if it's a lot out of place mathematically, unless you can prove there was a blunder. Okay, so the original subdivision map that created this block. Okay, that's what Browns would call an original map. Okay, it's an original controlling map, and the monuments set on that map are original controlling monuments, and these corners even though they aren't marked by monuments, are what Browns calls original corners. Okay, so in a, in a retracement survey, if you proportion the excess and shortage in the block to calculate these positions, they're going to control because they're original corners, even though they weren't marked by a monument. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let me say that one more time. This subdivision map is the original map because it created the lots, so it's the original controlling survey. And these eight monuments that were set on this map are original controlling monuments, and these interior lot corners are original corners, even though they don't have a monument to mark them. Okay? All right, now, let's fast forward in time, let's say 20 years. Okay, so I'm going to turn off these lot numbers, and we're going to fast forward 20 years, I'm sorry, let me show you these labels before we fast forward. Okay, so these are just some labels that help explain what we were talking about. Okay, so this is an original centerline monument. It's controlling. This is an original block corner monument. It is controlling. And these are individual lock corners. They were not set 
They were not marked on the subdivision map. Okay, but they're still an original corner, even though they weren't marked. Browns makes that point, chapter two. All right. So let's fast forward 20 years now after the original subdivision goes in. And the very first retracement survey comes in on lot one and two. So somebody hires a surveyor to perform a retracement survey. They own lot one and two. So we can turn the lot numbers on and you can see that. Okay, they own lot one and two. So that surveyor comes out. Now, when he comes out to do the survey, he finds out that this corner monument has been destroyed. So somebody put in a block wall here, and they destroyed this monument. Okay. Now, you got to remember, these other monuments were never set on the original subdivision map. Okay. But this one was. So he finds these other seven original corners, and he does some calculations, and he calculates these positions. Okay. And he sets a monument at each corner. Okay, now let's talk about the difference between these five monuments here and this monument in the corner because they're slightly different. So these five monuments here are marking original corners on the subdivision map, but they are retracing monuments because they weren't set on the original survey. So what that means is legally these, are, these monuments are not without error. They could potentially have error, which means... For example, if you find this northeast corner a lot too, two feet out of position from the record position of this corner, and you have reason to believe that the surveyor dorked that up, this monument will not control. Okay, The original corner controls the position that's two feet away, not this monument. So if I move this monument, let's say we find the monument. Let me turn off my snaps. We find this monument out of place. Okay. If this was an original monument, this lot line would kink more than likely, but it's not. It's a retracement monument, so the lot line isn't going to kink. It's going to go to the original corner, okay, which is in the position based on the subdivision map and these other found original monuments. Okay, Now, there are always exceptions to the rule okay, that can be shown, but that's the basic rule. The general rule is uh, these are retracement monuments. They are not as sacred as these original controlling monuments. Okay. So that applies to these five because these original corners weren't marked on the original survey. That is a concept that most people do not understand, understand and even a few surveyors don't understand. Okay, So that's important. Now let's talk about this one in the corner because it's a little different. So it is also a retracement monument. You'll notice it's the same shape and color. Okay, But it's a little bit different because it's a retracement monument that purports to replace an original controlling monument. Okay. So this corner was actually monumented on the original survey, okay? But it, even though this is an original corner, this is no longer an original monument because it's been replaced. The original monument was destroyed, and he replaced it. He reset it. So this is a retracement monument now that replaced an original monument, and it is also not without error in the eyes of the law. So if we found this guy out of place... Okay, there's where the original subdivision mon, if this surveyor made a mistake on retracement survey one and he reset this out of position, okay, this monument isn't going to control because it's not an original monument. This original corner is going to control, just like over here. Okay, but I just wanted to point out there is a difference here between this monument and this monument. Okay. So what's the difference again? The difference is this is the first monument ever set to mark this corner. Still a retracement monument, but it's the first monument set to mark this corner. This monument here is the second monument to mark this corner. So it is a retracement monument, but it was set to replace an original monument that marked the original corner. All right, let's make things a little more complicated. So we're going to turn off retracement survey number one. Okay, and I'm going to turn on the lot numbers. Now, 10 years after retracement survey number one, so this is 40 years after the original subdivision, a second retracement survey is done, okay? And it's done for lot four, eight, and a portion of lot seven, which I'll explain. So let's turn off those lot numbers. It's a little bit messy. So we've got lot four and lot eight. So this gentleman here that owns this, let's call him Mr. Cano. Mr. Cano was deeded. Somebody bought these four lots, and they deeded to Mr. Cano Lot 4, Lot 8, and the east two-thirds of Lot 7. That was by deed, not by map. Okay. 
So Landon gets hired to survey Mr. Connell's parcel. And here's what he finds. He finds the four original centerline mods. Okay. He finds the three original block corners. He finds the retracement monument from the first retracement survey that was set to replace this original monument here on the block corner. Okay. Landon sets these three corners that were never marked because the client wants them marked. Okay. And then he sets two new monuments. Okay. On this new property line that was created by the sale. Okay. The east two thirds of lot seven. So let's review now because this survey has a whole grab bag of monument types. So it has two corners that are marked by original monuments. These were off the original sub. It has three retracement monuments that were set on original corners. Okay. And then it has two monuments that were set on original corners, but they're original corners per the deed, not per the subdivision map. Right. So these are original corners that were created by the deed that went to Mr. Cano from the owner of these four lots to Mr. Cano. It created these two corners, their original corners, because they were created by that deed, right? Because they he conveyed the east two-thirds of lot seven. Okay, so this survey here is the second retracement survey in this block, but it's what Browns calls the first survey of the east two-thirds of the lot. Okay, now it's not an original survey for the east two-thirds of the lot because it didn't create the lot. It didn't create this two-thirds chunk. It's just retracing the two-thirds chunk that was in the deed. If this had been a parcel map that did this, then these monuments would be original controlling mods per the parcel map. But it's not. We're just retracing a deed. So that's what Mr. Brown calls a first survey. And what he says basically in Chapter 2 is these monuments get treated with a little more deference or a little more respect than just a regular retracement monument because they were the first monuments set to mark this survey. And I would say there's case law that goes to show if this retracement survey number two was done shortly after this deed transfer between the owner of the four lots and Mr. Connell, that courts will sometimes treat these monuments from the first survey like they are, in fact, original controlling monuments. So that's just a little side note. So you can see this, this gets pretty complicated pretty fast, and that's why people that aren't experienced boundary surveyors should not do boundary surveying, right? So again, on this retracement survey number two, second retracement survey in this block, right? It has two original corners, three retracement corners, and it has two retracement corners of original corners per the deed, not per the submap. And because they are first survey monuments, retracement monuments, they're going to be treated with more respect not only by other surveyors, but in some cases, depending on the circumstances, by the court. Okay. All right. So that was a pretty complicated, <laughs> that was a semi-complicated example, but hopefully it helps you get a better understanding of the concepts that Brown's, uh, that Mr. Brown is talking about in Chapter 2 of his book, Brown's Boundary Control and Legal Principles.